quick little overview of recurrence relations. This is the second unit for um, number theory. And uh, the first two were really looking at using math induction as a proof technique. But this section, we're applying that to these new things, including Fibonacci. Uh, what I want to show you is actually something terminology today, because you're not really going to be doing any new techniques. It's all old stuff. Uh, proofs by induction and finding patterns. So let's say we had a pattern here of 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Uh, a sequence is a list where we have this rule of A of n. Each value of n is called a term. Okay, a term is substituting a 0, you get A0. Then you have A1, A2. Those are all terms. Something I was reading in here that I thought was kind of helpful is would you circle A0 and A1 in those notes? Can you find that? It's below sequence. They make a really good point is that some problems, A0 is going to be helpful and some A1 is going to be helpful. And it kind of de de depends on what sequence you're using. And it depends on what zero is. For example, with this one, it makes sense to have an A0. Zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial. But a lot of times it doesn't. You, know, you might start with one. One squared, two squared, three. Would there be zero squared? Well, I guess you could, but um, it just depends on what they're starting with. So don't be thrown off if one time they start with A0 and sometimes they don't. These are both initial terms and it depends on which sequence they're at. Okay, so A0, if you have this A of N, we have A0 will be 0 factorial equals 1. And we put a 1 in for N, we get A of 1 is 1 factorial, okay? And by the way, factorial is 1 times the previous value, which is 1. 2 factorial is going to be 2 times the previous um, uh, value, which is going to be 2, 2 times 1. 3 factorial will be 3 times, 4 times. And so when we put all of this together, we're going to get an A of N closed formula, excuse me, recursive formula, where you're taking the N value you're at times what? N is 1, a is A of 0. N is 2, A of 1. N is 3, A of 2. What do you notice about the N value? N minus 1, right? So this is going to be my recursive function. And I, I like what they did. A of N is equal to N times A of N minus 1. Now what you could have done, and that's if you start at 1. N greater than or equal to 1. But let's say you started at 2. So you still want to include this 0. So you could do n greater than or equal to 2, but now you're going to do an n minus 1. And this is going to be um, n minus 1, and this is going to be a of n minus 2. Now it still works. You put in a 2 here, this is A of 0, which is uh, A of 0 is 0, and this is going to be 2 minus 1 is 1, so it works out. You could also do A of n minus 2. n minus 2, A of n minus 3. And you see that all of these do the same thing. All of these are the same formulas, just starting at a different place. And you can get a general formula for that, but the reason I bring this out is that these are what we call relations of this very first one. We call a recurrence relation. And you can really see how all of this works out. So when I do definitions, they get pretty heavy. So I'm going to show you the ones that I think are useful. Uh, the first one is uh, homogeneous. Where is that? Homogeneous, okay, and inhomogeneous. 
What they're talking about there is, is there in your final formula, is there something added to it? Okay. Uh, if there isn't, it's said to be homogenous. If there is, then we'll say inhomogenous. Uh, degree has to be, and I think it's on this slide, maybe it's the, yeah, degree is right here. Degree is the A of N minus 1 or the A of N minus 2 and so on. This would be degree 1. This would be degree 2. This is degree 1. This is degree 2. What oh, doesn't like that, does it? Degree. All right. And then linear is just not squared, cubed, square root. Nonlinear would be something otherwise. So I like to bring that out. And then the last thing are constant coefficients. So the, the terms that you need to be aware of, and we'll go over them and you'll get it totally. Degree, that's this A of N minus R. That's going to tell you the degree. Linear, that's going to be if there's any kind of uh, A of N minus 1 to the first power. Non of course, you can have a nonlinear too if you don't have that. Uh, homogenous. That's when you add zero to it. Inhomogenous is when you add the um, uh, anything onto it, and then constant coefficients. And those are just going to be multiplied through. Makes no sense until you see examples. So let's do some. Uh, all of these are fantastic. So let's start with Fibonacci right here. There's Fibonacci. What degree do you think this is? A of n minus 1, A of n minus 2. What do you think degree it is? 2. Because see the n minus 2? Second degree. There are constants multiplied but they're ones, <laughs> okay? And then do you, is that going to be homogenous or not? Do you see anything added other than those terms? Like five or n? No, so it's homogenous, nothing's added. And then it's linear because there are no squares. So Fibonacci is a second degree linear homogenous occurring relation. Take a look at this next one here. This one. What degree is it? One, because there's the one. Yeah. Is there a square or square root or cube to it? Nope, so it's linear. Are we adding five or adding n? Nope, so it's homogeneous. And then there is a coefficient. It has constant coefficients with it. By the way, this one has a name. It's called the geometric sequence. You can look at that, too. Uh, let's just go down to this one right here. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. This is a good example of it. Okay, now, this one here, what's the degree going to be? a squared n minus 1 plus a of n minus 2 times a of n minus 3. Degree 3. Yeah, because you see a 3 here. Um, is there anything added on to the terms? Nope. So it's homogenous. Do you see a square anywhere? Yes. So it's nonlinear. Does that help? All right. And then uh, constants. There are constants of 1. Doesn't look like it, but it's a 1 and a 1 here. So that we'll have some constants. They didn't list that, but it, they do. And then the last one, we'll look at this guy right here. All right, uh, what's the degree? A of n minus 1 plus n. A of n minus 1, it's degree 1. Is it linear? Yep. 
is there something added to the term, like a of n minus 1, like 5 or n? Yes. So it's inhomogeneous. And there are constants, 1 multiplied, so they have constant coefficients. How are you doing with the terminology? Good? Question? There were a didn't mention. Now, one last thing, and I don't, yep, they've got it right here. Would you highlight this right here in the middle of the page? Closed form. Okay. Closed form, what they're saying with the closed form is no, no, um, none of those values. Uh, A of n minus 1, no recursive terms in it. A of n is equal to 10 minus 7n. And you can find that by building a pattern. And that's exactly what you're going to do. Okay. So I wanted to do this together, but we ran out of time. Um, I think we'll be fine with these. So group A, you're going to do those problems. They're set up here. Uh, group B, you can see those. And group C, you can see those. Find the patterns, prove your closed form. And the closed form is going to be the result of your pattern. Let me just do that. Let me just see if I can get through that example quick. This one here. Find the first five terms of the sequence. So we start with A0, and it's 1. A1 is going to be first of these terms. K is a constant. So we're going to have 1 times K. So this will be K. A2 is going to be uh, K times K. So this is going to be K squared. A3 is going to be k squared times k, which is k cubed. And a4, what do you think that's going to be? k to the fourth. So this is going to be a of n, should be k to the n. So that's, those are the first one, two, three, four, five. I did six terms. Let's build a conjecture. Done. This is my closed form. solution. Okay? Then, what do you think you're going to have to do? <laughs> you're going to have to prove it. So then you'll do n equal to 1, n equal to t, and then you're going to prove for n equal to t plus 1. And this will be simple. It'll work just fine.